Greetings, Mr. Tommy Clayman, and thank you for joining me in this discussion. Yeah, thank you for thank you for having me. Um, today, um, we plan to discuss the planned implementation of the electronic call-up system or the e call system on the Lekki Epic Corridor. And as a researcher of African transport systems, I would like to gain your insight as to what the local state government is planning to do in order to ease the movement of articulated trucks along the corridor, owing to the fact that daily around 2,000 trucks fly that route. And being that people live there, there are other um, residential and commercial um, uses around that area, it's important to um, plan the movement of these trucks so that they do not negatively impact um, on the living and um, business of that area. Is that okay, sir? Yeah. Okay, uh, we should also note that this is not the first time the local state government is trying to um, implement the ecosystem. The local state government earlier implemented the ecosystem on the upper part port and Tinkan area. But that wasn't so successful because there were lots of um, situations that uh, made implementation not so successful. And now, on this like a corridor that houses several um, big time um, economic industries like the Lekki Pedro Zone, the Dangote Refinery, the Lekki Deep Seaport, that um, use a lot of articulated trucks. Um, the local state government is thinking that with um, the e-color system, it can address um, the traffic congestion that comes with um, lots of trucks flying a singular route. So um, in this section, I'll be asking some questions to try to um, get your insight, your expert insight uh, as to the plan implementation on, of the e-color system on the Lake Effect Corridor. And, um, the first question I'll start with is, um, what do you see as the primary benefits of implementing the ecolog system on the Lake Effect Corridor? Uh, thank you. Yeah, I mean it's a good, it's a good, um, it's a good uh, system. I think uh, the electronic call-up systems have been gaining traction globally. I think they started being installed in various ports around the early 2000s. And uh, they go by the name of truck appointment system, TAS or, or gate, truck gate appointment systems. And different ports mm -hmm. in the world have been implementing them to um, manage, as a way to manage the existing infrastructure um, and reduce the, con the uh, congestion on the corridors that the trucks um, ply to access the ports for either pickup or um, drop off of uh, of containers, and for in terms of the benefit, the benefits are the benefits are have been seen in some of the, some of these systems. They, uh, some of them sh uh, have shown some reduction in the. Uh, congestion level. Uh, some of them will also show reduction in the CO2 emissions um, along those corridors. So using, using such a system allows you to um, maximize the utility of your existing infrastructure without um, expanding the infrastructure, like increasing the size of the, the width of the roads, and add in more gates and all those other expenses. So you can use the electronics to do that management of the system. So that it's uh, so those are okay. the benefits that, that can be gotten from it. Okay, um, so paint a better picture of um, the proposed implementation strategy of equal of system on the Lake Effect Corridor. Um, there are several um, strategies that the government um, um, is 
intends to use on that corridor. And one of those is the designated five operational parks to house these trucks when they're not on the roads. Um, they are trying to uh, avoid or prevent what happened on the upper and Tinkan areas whereby trucks have been parking on the roads, um, thereby causing um, gridlocks and um, traffic congestion on the road. Aside that, um, they, they intend to use RFID scanners um, whereby um, oper uh, operatives of the government can use the scanners and scan the trucks to know where exactly they are to be. Because during the um, ecolop system on the leg on the um, Tinkan upper port area, there were issues whereby um, some drivers would um, get e syndicate ecolop tags and hold on to them and be at the parks when they were not supposed to be there by affecting the um, correct implementation of this stuff. So um, seeing um, how these good initiatives are, aside that, um, the Lagos State um, Commissioner for Transportation, um, Oluwa Sheon, um, said, or CME, he said that when um, the ECLOS sense starts, it was to start August 1st, but days to um, the launch of the program on that um, corridor, the Lagos State government postponed it. But he said when the ECLOS sense starts, that um, the Lagos State government plans to um, ban um, the movement of these articulated trucks on the Lake Effect corridor within the um, peak periods, which are between 5 a.m. and 9 a.m. and between 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. And um, he called this the bell time that ensures that during that peak periods, the trucks um, wouldn't be on the road so that um, the other road users that are using um, this the, the route for business, business and other um, endeavors can go about their business freely. And seeing that um, these initiatives are well thought out, and I want to know um, what um, or how effective do you think these five parts will be in regulating the truck movement along the corridor? Put in mind that um, there are around 2,000 trucks flying that route daily. Okay. Yeah, regarding the parks, I haven't seen the plan of the um, the siting of those particular truck parks along the corridor. So I don't know where they are, first of all. And also, I don't know the truck space capacity of each parking space, because what will determine the usefulness of those truck parks is because the truck parks have to act as buffers to hold the trucks uh, for the times that they are not mm -hmm. accessing the route. If you do not have enough um, buffer uh, with the truck's parking space to uh, accommodate the demand on that corridor, then you're going to end up with trucks parking on the side of the road regardless, because you don't have enough capacity um, to act as a, as a buffer. So, the locations of the of the part of the um, parking garages, and also the um, truck parking space capacity of those parking garages are uh, necessary to be able to determine how useful those would be. Sorry for the delay. Okay, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hello. Okay, sorry for the um break. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, so you're saying that um, since you do not um, know um, the holding capacity of this um, of these parks, you can't really um, say as to their efficiency in um, controlling the movements or stopping traffic congestion as so, as seen on the um, upper part of ports. Do right now, I haven't gotten um, the full um, plan. Okay, um, another um, strategy that the local state government plans um, as to uh, plans on the um, Lake Epe corridor as concerning the ecolop system is to um, separate wet and dry cargoes. And um, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, the, depending on um, separating wet and dry cargo. Well, regarding those, yeah. I don't really know what the uh, research is on 
the impacts of that. So I can see it adding a lot more complexity in the um, scheduling system if you want to separate uh, cargo based on whether they're wet or or dry or dry cargo. So that will that will likely throw in another layer of complexity into the uh, into the scheduling. The um, so I don't really know how I don't really know the imp what that impact would be on on the system, but uh, I would like to see what they how they plan on implementing implementing that. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much. That's fair. Um, like I said, one of the issues that uh, was um, discovered among many issues on of implementation of the ECOLOS system on the Tinkan and Papa Port area was that um, some drivers um, kind of get um, these e-tags, like, like syndicates, like get more than is required of them, then hold on to it and sell it off to other people, um, thereby um, affecting the um, right implementation of this program on that corridor. So I'm asking what um, shortcomings experienced on the upper port and Tinkan ports so as not to repeat search um, on the Lake Apex corridor. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, the it's very useful to to take learnings from the from the Apapa um, e call up implementation, and um, I because I know there were the issues of um, racketeering with like you stated um, people um, yeah. uh, kind of coercing the coercing the system um, the system uh, booking appointments ahead of time. Getting um, uh, what you call it, uh, fake plate uh, plate numbers, and using those to sell at a higher price to yeah. uh, to truck drivers to truck drivers that were in a hurry to get to um, to get to their to their cargo at the port. And one other issue is the in terms of the. Um, the actual tangibles from that implementation because the goal of that implementation was to reduce the congestion and also lower the costs of um, transporting uh, cargo via trucks but okay. and on the company because they have the company the um, truck uh, truck traffic um, planning company that is handling the eto system for the um, yeah. e call up at apapa um, like they're stating on their end that they're seeing a 65% reduction in costs and they're also seeing some reduction in congestion. But then on the other hand, the users are saying something totally different because users are saying that they used to be at the port, uh, they used to be at the holding um, area at Lily, uh, Lily Pond Park for usually three days before they get called up to uh, to the port and now it's taking three weeks so it's like wow. has the system actually helped in reducing delays or has it um has it created an artificial scarcity uh, to mess up the system and create an opportunity for racketeering which is what we are seeing at apapa yeah. so I would say focusing on ironing, ironing out the issues that we that they currently have at Apapa to make sure that uh, the system is actually working as it's supposed to before pursuing yeah. any further implementation. Because um, right now, okay. if they implement the system as it is um, at the Lekki free, free, free Trade Zone, there's a high likelihood that we are going to get the same mm -hmm. issues that we are seeing on a Papa repeated. Uh, so uh, I would say rather than going going forward with the uh, implementation of a of the e up system at Lecky at the, on the Lecky Equip corridor, they should focus on making sure that the existing system at a Papa works efficiently. Then they can now move on to implement it at uh, another on another corridor rather than just implementing it without focusing on outcomes. Because right now it looks like 
they're just implementing it for implementing sake and implementation sake, and they're not really caring about the actual outcomes and what they're trying to achieve. Okay, um, if I played devil advocate here, um, one of the um, strategies they intend to use that was not used um, in the upper part in that area was this build time, whereby they say trucks would not be allowed to move on the corridor between the peak periods. This was not implemented in the um, upper part and sink and port areas. And this is planned to be implemented along the Lake Epic corridor. So do you think um, the belt time can make um, the implementation of the ECLOP system on the Lake Epic corridor better than how it was in the um, upper part and sink and area? Yeah, so the, um... Uh, the build time as he um, the um, um, as the Lagos state government is is calling it so there's going to allow uh, or prevent trucks from accessing the corridor within certain peak times um, 6 p.m to 10 p.m uh, as it 8 a.m to uh, yeah, 12 or 8 8 a.m in, um, I can't remember the morning time. But um, it is a good system, but it all comes down to how that is implemented. Because uh, these things have, this is not the first time that such timed, um, uh, what you call it, restrictions on trucks have been implemented anywhere in Nigeria before. So if this has been done in Abuja during the El Rufai, uh, El Rufai era and there were some benefits, but also they ran into the same issues. There was not enough parking spaces for the trucks. Uh, they have you ended up having trucks parked on the side of the road, blocking traffic. So even during the time that the trucks were not supposed to be in motion, they were parked on the road, blocking traffic. So every is the entire system. It's you have to look at the entire system. Every the entire infrastructure has to be in place for it to work effectively. So if you don't have the infrastructure to enforce the system, so um, it, the, there should not be an opportunity where you create a platform and it is being hijacked by racketeers. You have to create a system and install a robust system that it should be able to prevent such from happening. And those are the basic infrastructure things that need to be uh, um, need to be in place. Added to the fact that they need to have the um, right amount of uh, of um, of parking spaces to accommodate the trucks during the holding periods and the staging pe uh, periods before they enter the corridor. Okay. Okay. I said thank you so much for your response. Before we draw the curtain close on this section. I've seen you've seen a lot of things that ought to be done um, before um, this can be implemented. So if you can um, compile all the key indicators that the local state government is to meet before um, the imp implementation of the ECLOP on the Lake Epic Corridor takes place, what would the key indicators be? Like if to say um, the local state government or the local state commission of um, transportation is joining us now. What are the key indicators they should ensure is in place before um, they can go ahead with the implementation? The key, the main, the most critical component of this is the how they're going to validate and enforce um, the appointments, the book, the bookings of the trucks. So that is where they're currently having issue in Apapa because they don't have the um, they don't have um, the um, infrastructure in place to be able to do that. I know they're talking about using the RFIDs, but yes, you need the RFID yeah. tags. You need um, the you need the electronic gates. You need a system. You need a platform that people can book. And then you can verify that the truck that is making that booking is the truck that shows up at the at the appointed time. So those are the, those are the critical components. And I don't think 
they have that figured out yet. Because if you don't have that, then you create an opportunity where people can pre-book and sell them, make uh, a use of the uh, artificially imposed uh, scarcity to sell uh, slots at higher higher prices. So that's one component. Mm -hmm. The other is ensuring that they have um, you know, usually in urban areas, you, you're, you're always limited in terms of truck parking. So you're never going to have enough truck parking spaces in most urban areas. And that's all around the world. You have, there's always a deficit in the required amount of parking. So, but that regardless, they have to make sure that they are able to handle the movement and handle the um, uh, the traffic demand on those on that corridor without causing adverse effects. Because um, if you if you're not able to coordinate the movements of the trucks effectively, and you don't have enough parking, that those truck parking will spill over onto the streets. And if you start to enforce um uh use um law enforcement to enforce the um by seizing trucks or impounding trucks that are now parking on the street because of there's not enough capacity then you're just creating an artificial um scarcity in the system so it might end up if you don't have those things in place you might end up creating a worse scenario than you we started with wow. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Tanakin, for your contributions. I really appreciate it, and I hope we do more later. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks. Thank you, Kelly. Bye. Okay, bye.